Well, there has been a long pause between my last movie on cancer and this new group. And uh, there's been a reason for that. The reason is that, you know, every pathologist loves to talk about cancer and they consider themselves experts on it because that's what they do their whole life. And they don't realize that so much has radically changed in the last generation. And people no longer think of cancer the way we old-fashioned guys do. I thought this was going to be the easiest and least difficult uh, chapter to present, and it wound up being the most difficult because of the tremendous new way of thinking about cancer due to the major advances in molecular biology and genetics. So let's uh, start out by saying, uh, after this rant is over now, that we still do not know what causes cancer. We've learned a phenomenal amount in terms of uh, genes and molecules. But, you know, like genetics in general, I think there's a lot of reasons for all physicians to feel very, very, very uh, inadequate and insecure and inferior when it comes to the topic of cancer because like genetics it just doubles in information you know the year you graduate from medical school so let's try to keep you up to date uh, on the most uh, common way of uh, thinking about the molecular basis of cancer and uh, I hope I can do a good job now for the rest of the chapter 7 Cancer has a molecular basis. It has a genetic basis. All cancer starts out from genetic mutations, genetic damages to cells. If they were lethal enough to kill the cell, that would be nice. But the problem is when this process of genetic damage transforms a single cell into a cancer cell, we then have what we call the process of transformation. All tumors, all real tumors, all malignant tumors are monoclonal, which means they start out from one single cell. And uh, there are ways of uh, proving this, like the G6PD test, which I'm not going to bother you with, or some other tests. But the fact is, all cancers, all tumors, all real neoplasms, benign and malignant, start out from a series of changes in the cell which uh, result in just one cell being a tumor cell. That cell then goes through a variety of steps now, no longer called transformation, but progression to then become tumors and do all the things that we know tumors to do. When we talk about the genetic uh, basis of uh, cancer, we're talking about various genes and let's try to classify those hopefully uh, logically, into four different groups. We have the proto-oncogenes, which are normal genes. Any gene in your body that somehow is involved in growth regulation is called a proto-oncogene. That's a normal gene. When these genes are somehow mutated, they become oncogenes. And oncogenes, because all genes or many genes code for proteins, if they produce a protein, it's called an oncoprotein. There's a set of genes uh, called DNA repair genes, which act like a spell checker in that they make sure that the sequence of nucleotides in GNA is proper. And if it isn't, they fix it. So if you would have a defect in those various DNA pr repair genes, you can get tumors that way. And there are many tumors that are involved with uh, faults in those genes. Uh, remember, we've talked a lot about apoptosis, uh, which is the way cells normally die. So if there is a defect in a protein or in a gene which encodes for that protein involved in apoptosis, the cell doesn't normally die then, then does it? So that's another class of genes which are indicted in uh, carcinogenesis. And remember, there is not one single gene or mutated normal gene which causes cancer. It takes multiple uh, genes, and carcinogenesis itself is a multi-step process. Perhaps 
the division between benign and malignant tumors would be conceptually is if the uh, process stops at the invasive level, it would then be a benign tumor. If it progresses into invasion, metastases, blah, 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 that's a malignant tumor. That's one way of conceptualizing it. Uh, let us um, talk about what we're going to be talking about in the next several uh, clips. We're going to talk about various uh, processes involved in malignant transformation or tumor transformation, which is defined, once again, as a process by which normal cells become tumor cells. And then progression, what those tumor cells do to uh, progress uh, and become things that we know and behave as cancer. We'll be talking about uh, the fact that tumor cells seem to have a self-sufficiency in growth signals, which means they're out of control. Related to this is the fact that there are a wide variety of genes and enzymes and proteins which are involved in growth regulation or really growth inhibition. When there is a failure of those genes, that's what we call a growth inhibiting signal insensitivity. We also mention that normal cells die. Well, if for some reason the genes and the proteins involved in apoptosis are mutated or fail, then cells don't die. And what do you think that that's going to result in? Uh, the, uh, we'll talk about the uh, spell checkers of the body called the DNA repair genes and the proteins which they encode. When they fail, DNA can no longer be fixed. And what do you think that unfixed or bad or defective DNA results in? Yes, you guessed it. We'll talk about telomerase and the fact that uh, telomeres normally limit the number of cell divisions. So if there is an enzyme which interferes with that, you would think that that cell would not be limited in its division, and that would be a factor for cancer as well. Now, in the uh, uh, stages through progression, you know, once we have malignant cells, those malignant cells can invoke factors which make them grow. In other words, evoke blood vessels to make them grow nor more than a millimeter or two. We're going to talk about factors which make them invasive, and we'll talk about the ability of those cells then to metastasize. Because when you think about it, if tumors did not metastasize, they probably wouldn't uh, normally kill as readily as they uh, often do. So uh, let's see if we could do this in about two minutes. Uh, this is nothing more, even though it looks like a busy chart. Just remember, we're talking about a normal cell. And let's say that that normal cell has DNA damage. Well, if your DNA repair genes and proteins are working, it goes back to a normal cell again, doesn't it? Or at least it's repaired. Or it may become apoptotic and die, which is normal. But let's say you have processes like activation of growth promoting oncogenes or inactivation of the cells or genes, I'm sorry, which normally suppress growth or alterations in genes which regulate apoptosis. If you have decreased apoptosis or unregulated cell proliferation, you'll eventually result in a clonal expansion of one single cell. That's all that it takes, and all tumors come from one cell. If that cell then progresses by virtue of having the ability to evoke blood vessels, escape from immune surveillance, uh, and mutate even further, because malignant, unstable cells mutate, even though they're eventually clonal, they r mutate more than normal cells. This tumor progresses to the point that it becomes invasive, malignant, metastatic. And folks, that's the end of the story. And it's also the end of this 10-minute clip. And uh, I'm going to be very excited to go into the rest of this. And uh, thank you very much.